One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for a late night edition of Treeb Talks. It is currently 10:53 where I am at here in Lewiston, Idaho. The first round of the NFL draft summed up about an hour ago, and a lot of things happened. To where the Jaguars ended up with the most perfect pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. If you already haven't watched my reaction to that pick, go ahead and watch that now. And if you do not know already, the Jaguars selected Josh Allen, defensive end out of Kentucky with the 7th overall uh, selection. He ended up falling and he fell all the way to 7. We're going to talk about how he got there, if I think it's a good move, and what you guys should be expecting from Josh Allen. So ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jaguars round one first round selection review. So first of all, let us discuss how Josh Allen was able to fall to the Jacksonville Jaguars. So with the first overall pick, the Arizona Cardinals selected Kyler Murray. And this was a pick I was actually surprised about, even though, you know, mock drafters were saying this is going to be the selection. I just thought this was a big old smoke screen. I didn't think they were actually going to take Kyler Murray. And I think the Cardinals kind of fucked up that pick, uh, mostly because they couldn't find Rosen a landing destination in the first round. The fact that they didn't have a setup trade, because it's not like during the during the draft, during the first round, it's not like Arizona didn't try to deal Josh Rosen. They did, they just could not get a first round pick out of him. And honestly, are you that surprised? I mean, if you were going to do that, like you knew months in advance you were going to take Kyler Murray, you should have worked out a deal before draft night to deal Josh Rosen, but the Cardinals didn't do that. So, you know, they put themselves in a bad situation drafting Kyler Murray. I think that this is not going to help the Cardinals improve very much, but there's a lot of talent in the second round still available that the Cardinals can still pick, and they get the first pick in the second round. You know, a guy like Greedy Williams. Greedy Williams, I think, is going to be an excellent selection for the Cardinals in the second round because Patrick Peterson's already talking about how he's not happy in Arizona, so that would be a good selection for them, and, you know, maybe we'll save their overall draft grade, but I just I did not like the Kyler Murray pick. You know, there was a lot of picks in this draft that I was really really surprised about. The second overall selection was, of course, Nick Bosa, because, of course, it was going to be, you know, that was the Niners guy from the start, so no real big surprise there. And then at number three, God, I this is just slipping my mind. It's been a long night, ladies and gentlemen. I am tired, and, I, you know, like all these picks are not coming to me. Of course, the Jets selected Quinn and Williams, who uh, the Cardinals passed on, so that was a good selection by them, a uh, good pick by the Jets. The Raiders shocked everybody and drafted Klein Farrell. So that was just shocking, you know, and there was foreshadowing before this that everybody was going to say the Raiders were going to be making a shocking pick. And, you know, there was just a lot of talented cats on the board like Josh Allen that they could have selected, um, but they didn't, and they decided to go get uh, Cleland Farrell, who I had graded as like a mid-talented, a mid-talent, you know, first-round pick but he ended up going this high to the Raiders. So a reach from Oakland opened the door. So Josh Allen was still on the board. The Bucks got their guy at linebacker with Devin White, who was basically their pick all along. They knew they were going to be getting Devin White. So they would made that selection. Then at six, the shot... The shock and awe, dude. I can't even tell you. We were watching this. And my apologies also if you tried to watch the live stream. I apologize. It didn't work out. It was just... It just wasn't working, man. It just... Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong, so we couldn't go live. But if you were to watch us, like all my friends when we were watching this draft... If you were to watch my reaction, when I seen that the Giants picked Daniel Jones... My jaw literally hit the floor. I was shocked. I heard about rumors that he was going to be going... To the New York Giants at six, but I had, I didn't think for a million years that they'd actually do it, but they did it, and whew, the the Giants picked him over Dwayne Haskins, and then the Redskins put themselves in a really good situation where Dwayne Haskins kept falling and falling and falling. 
up until he went at 15. So the Redskins didn't even need to trade. So, you know, with Dwayne Haskins falling, that kind of ended up fucking the Cardinals too because, you know, if Haskins were to go earlier, say maybe the Jags took a gamble, gamble on him at 7, then I think the Cardinals would have been in more of a driver's seat to get a first-round pick, trade it with Washington to get number 15 and, you know, pick somebody there. And then, you know, the Redskins would have ended up getting Josh Rosen. But the fact that Dwayne Haskins, you know, continuously fell, you know, that ended up hurting the Cardinals overall but let's talk about number seven with the Jags you know I was stressed out when the Jags were on the clock because I realized Josh Allen was still on the board and that's one big thing we need is depth but you know he's probably going to be a day one starter because if you move uh, Calais Campbell to the inside think of this starting four you got Yannick Ngakwe, Calais Campbell, Marcel Darius and Josh Allen that's going to be a dirty starting four and you know they're already named Saxonville for a reason but at this time I really thought the Jags were gonna do it I did think they were gonna do it I thought there's no way that this team and knowing how you know much they valued the defense and value defensive players I knew when Josh Allen was still on the board that this was gonna be the Jaguars selection but it's still in the back of my mind I was like this front office man this front office we're still gonna be taking J1 Taylor it's not gonna matter and we're all gonna be upset and then you know still in the back of my head also I was like maybe we do get TJ Hawkinson here I think the Jags would have taken Hawk if we didn't have the opportunity to draft Josh Allen at number seven, but I'm very excited with this pick. You know, if you haven't seen him play, he had the most sacks in the SEC this season. He had 17 sacks, and he plays in the SEC, which is the most competitive football conference, you know, in the whole NCAA. So you know that those are really good stats. And he was a guy I didn't even really think. Uh, you know, and it's funny because of my last video, uh, Mr. Chevy Truck commented on it. I couldn't even remember his name. I couldn't even remember his name to save my life. And, like, I wanted to say it was Josh Allen, but I was like, I'm going to sound stupid. But, you know, it's funny how that kind of thing works out. You know, I was stumbling on his name my last video, and then, you know, we ended up drafting him. And it was a very, very good selection. He was graded out as one of the be uh, what the best, I should say edge rusher by you know everybody and the fact that he slipped this far and the fact that the Giants drafted Daniel Jones and the Raiders didn't draft uh Josh Allen you know that's just unbelievable because there's no way that they actually had Klein Farrell ranked higher than Josh Allen on their draft boards but they evidently did because they took the gamble on him when he was still available and it's just it's just insane you know and I've seen some people comment on my video about how Yannick and Gawkwe becomes trade bait. You know, we still need to extend Yannick and Gawkwe. Why are we, you know, the people that are mad are thinking that Yannick and Gawkwe is completely out of the equation. Yannick and Gawkwe is far, far from out of the equation. The Jags are going to try everything in their power to sign him back. And he's not gonna, he's not gonna lose any reps, especially if the Jags do the situation where you know uh, Calais kind of goes down to like a three technique, and he's gonna be starting alongside uh, Marcel Darius, and then that's even best case scenario too, because you got Avery Jones coming in and Taven Bryan over there, and then you got Ngakwe and uh, Josh Allen holding down the edges. Uh, I would really enjoy that. I really, really would. But, you know, and then the Jags might have to draft another edge rusher. I would not be surprised if they if they do the, they get another one maybe in like the fifth, sixth round just to uh, add a little bit more depth. But, you know, Josh Allen is the selection. I think, you know, all the Jags fans that don't like this pick, for one, I think you're completely and utterly ridiculous because this was a great selection. If you want to talk about drafting the best player available, that's what this is, is drafting the best player available. And there is no reason at all why the Jaguars should have went and not picked Josh Allen. Like, be excited for this pick because this is going to help our defense and our defensive line out tremendously. And hopefully, with the second round fast approaching tomorrow, you know, we are going to have a lot of opportunity to take a lot of talented guys at positions of need. You still got Irv Smith Jr. at the tight end position, and you got a whole load of wide receivers that uh, you can still pick. You still got DK Metcalf, who shockingly, I, I, I had a feeling he wouldn't go high, but I didn't think he wasn't going to be a first-round pick, you know what I'm saying? But you still got DK Metcalf on the board. You got Irv Smith Jr., like I said. Uh, Hakeem Butler, he's still on the board. Uh, what other wide receivers are still in the A.J. Brown, a guy that I've been, you know, open and talked about saying how good he is. And, you know, I would be all for an A.J. Brown selection. And 
you know, help help give Nick Foles some targets and, you know, maybe draft like a Dawson Knox in the third round. But we're going to be talking second, third round draft tomorrow uh, in the morning. You know, touch on who I think the Jags should select. But there's, there's still a whole lot of talent that the Jags can pick. And they could still get the guy that they thought that they were going to select seventh overall, which is funny because it kind of reminds me of 2016. This draft is very similar to 2016 because we did not anticipate Jalen Ramsey falling to us. And the original pick where we were at was supposed to be Miles Jack. And then we ended up getting Miles Jack in the second round. And, you know, no one thought we were going to get Josh Allen. And then maybe we sneak and go and get Jaywan Taylor in the second round. You also got Cody Ford, who is still available as well. Just a whole lot of talent still available in the second round. But I'm not going to give a grade on this one because I'm going to make a whole video about that grade in every single pick. But just know that I am a big fan of this one. And I think the Jaguars are very, very fortunate to have Josh Allen on the Saxonville team. And very fortunate that he fell to us as well. I really, really like the pick, and I cannot stress that enough. Today was a good day for the Jaguars. And that was going over the Jaguars' first round selection. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, check the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, check out my Teespring account. Get yourself some Troop Talks merch. And make sure, of course, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Dems are just straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.